with this with these building blocks uh, as our uh, understanding. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna draw this all out in a timeline, and you can see printed for you on page two sixteen. Here are options for where these pieces fit. Now, the reason I do it this way is because I've taught Panorama a bunch of times. I've talked about the end times in just discipleship with people. Often, uh, it's something that that's that people really want to learn about. And what I found is when you dive right into all these different views and all these different words, people are very unfamiliar and then it makes us feel completely intimidated. And I'd like that not to happen. So we've built these building blocks and now let's put them on a timeline. Okay. To do that, we're on page 216. And I'm going to draw for us uh, the way that we have it printed in the timeline, which we're going to come to the big words in a minute, which we call the pre-millennial. And then we're going to look at the pre-mill, pre-trib view. That's what I'm going to draw out for you here. Uh, that's the view that fellowship, uh, we might say, fellowship adopts. And uh, but we, have, we give charity to other views. That's why we've got them printed here. So we have the Passion Week of Jesus. That's the cross. At Pentecost, Jesus is sending the Spirit to indwell this thing called the church. Okay? So, that's where we find ourselves right now. We are experiencing the, the at this point, been nearly 2,000 years of this thing called the church. Now, let's work with our building blocks. So, we're going we're gonna to do our building blocks from bottom to the top first. So let's do it that way. That way we can see where we're putting these pieces. So, we expect that Jesus will return. That's what this down arrow is. Jesus is going to return. It's a literal return, and it's a future return. So we're right here. This is you and me watching this. We're experiencing the church. And one day in the future, Revelation 19, Jesus will return. And we've noted that Revelation 20 comes after Revelation 19. What does Jesus do? He establishes, this is supposed to be a castle. It's a pretty awesome castle right there. He establishes... That's really good. He establishes his kingdom. And we're calling this in the timeline the thousand years or the millennial kingdom. This is where rightness, justice is permeating the earth. We said that to, is to establish justice, injustice has to be dealt with. And to deal with that injustice, we have the tribulation. The tribulation is, by the way, Revelation chapters 9 or 6 through 1910. Revelation 19 takes place is Jesus' return. And then Revelation 20 is this thousand years. Notice how Revelation is putting this together. Now for the rapture, okay? So we've got the future literal return we, right here. We've got the kingdom. We've got the tribulation. And the question of the rapture is this. Will the rapture take place before the tribulation? So will the church be saved out of this thing called the tribulation? Or will the church experience the tribulation? And for, for the way that fellowship teaches this, we would place the rapture before the tribulation. Logically, the answer is the church does not experience this thing called the tribulation. So here's our building blocks. We've got future literal return. Jesus establishes a kingdom to defeat injustice. He first has to purge the earth of that injustice in this judgment called the tribulation, and the church will not experience that, so therefore the church is raptured out. There's the timeline of what we might call a premillennial, pre-tribulation view of the, the end times or eschatology. Now, uh, we're going to come back later and put new heavens, new earth over here, but let's make sense of the words because what happens in end times studies, eschatology is what it's called, is the words get us really tripped up. So if you look at page 216, uh, I'm going to make sense of these words hopefully for us. When we talk about pre-mill, post-mill, or all-mill, so premillennialism, post-millennialism or all millennialism, what we're talking about is where do we orient Jesus' return to this kingdom? Okay, What I've drawn is Jesus comes pre-kingdom or before the millennium. Notice how this, how this is drawn. That's why I put the thousand here. Here's our thousand-year kingdom, millennium. Jesus returns before it or pre-millennial. Post-millennialism would be this. Jesus returns after the kingdom. So a post-millennial understanding would be this. Where is the kingdom? 
The church is that kingdom. So if we're drawing out a post-millennial view, it looks like this. We have Jesus. He establishes this thing called the church. The church builds the kingdom. And Jesus will then return. So where does justice and rightness get established in the world? In the church. Jesus comes back. This is our 1,000 years. Jesus returns post-millennial kingdom. And this would be expecting a rising increase of the, we might even say the political influence of Christianity in the world. Christianity will be a literal kingdom established in the world, okay? Uh, there are very few who hold this view uh, today, and so I'm not, we're not all that concerned with it, but you, it's worth thinking about. If you look at uh, all millennialism, so an atheist is one who denies that there is a theist version of God. They, they're rejecting that concept. So an all millennial view would be one that says there is no millennial no millennium. So they're going to say, no, 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 no. We're not expecting it to be after Jesus comes back or before Jesus comes back. Instead, the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. So let's draw it this way. If you look at all millennialism down here is what Roberts call it, what we're calling evangelical amillennialism. Here's what this looks like. We're drawing it out. Jesus has come. And the, the way I think is, makes the most sense to draw this is, n notice, nobody's debating that Jesus will return. Everybody's agreeing that one day Jesus comes back. Okay, that's the return of Jesus. But what the all-millennial perspective would say is there is a spiritual kingdom. We might say Jesus is the, our king right now. He's ruling and reigning on his throne in heaven. But on the earth, we have this thing called the church. And in the church, Jesus is our king. We orient to Jesus as king. The earth will not experience the kingdom of Jesus because it's a spiritual kingdom. He's ruling and reigning in this place called the church. So the amillennial perspective is simply saying that they're not expecting this long period where Jesus is reigning in the world for this extended period of time with his people around him somewhere ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. That's the all-millennial perspective. Now, with that in mind, uh, that's how we talk about the millennial side of this, pre, post, or all millennial. The second thing is, where do we orient, we'll go back to this one, where do we orient the tribulation? So you, if you hear people say, I am pre-mill post-trib, or pre-mill pre-trib, or something like that, the, the, the pre, post, or all mill millennial part is, the, is orienting the return of Jesus to the kingdom, okay? The trib part of that, pre-mill, post, or pre-trib, or post-tribulation, that's talking about where do we put the rapture, okay? So that's where the language gets really confusing. That is asking the question, is it a pre-tribulation rapture or is it a post-tribulation rapture? So there are many who hold to a pre-millennial understanding of the return of Jesus and establishing the kingdom. But some would say that the rapture takes place before the tribulation, and others would say that the rapture takes place after the tribulation. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. The debate between this, these two camps is very, very uh, nuanced, and I would say that the biblical data, it's, it's hard to be dogmatic on the tribulation. I know some of you watching this that are very dispensational, and you know what even it means to say dispensational, are very passionate about the pre-trib rapture. And while we hold to that here at Fellowship, it's difficult to be dogmatic about the placement of the rapture. But that's making sense of the terminology. If you look here at the different options, pre-millennial, the top option on page 216, that is the pre-mill, pre-trib view. This is the view that fellowship holds. So pre-millennial return of Jesus, pre-tribulation rapture of Jesus. The second view is the pre-millennial return of Jesus with the post-tribulation rapture view. Okay? There's another, some people hold to a mid-tribulation rapture view. Uh, and you can get into the weeds of all this. And if you really want to know, you can send the question in. So a mid-tribulation, pre-millennial 
But mid-tribulation rapture, it gets really confusing. Uh, some would take a pre-millennial and then what we might call a partial rapture view. So there's little raptures taking place all throughout the tribulation. Uh, some would say that there is post-millennialism, which is the one that we looked at here, where the reign, will, the reign of the kingdom will literally be established in the world and grow. And our last view is the all-millennial perspective. Now, that is the op th those are the options for the wise reader of the panorama of the Bible. And maybe let me just invite you to dive in, to, to look at the theology, to, to maybe look at some books and study. We need to think deeply and clearly about these issues and care. This really is important. We're talking about the destiny of the world, the destiny of, hu the destiny of humanity. We're talking about justice and rightness being established in the world, the return of Jesus. This is not, uh, this is not secondary. This is not for old, for those kind of nerds out there, the theology nerds. This is really important for us. And when we're making disciples, we want to help people understand uh, what it looks like. This also makes sense of a huge amount of Scripture. So with that in mind, we will finally look at the book of Revelation.